late breaking news, the U.S. carrying out another strike against Houthi rebels in Yemen, this time against a radar site, according to two U.S. defense officials. The strike conducted by a U.S. Navy ship, and now the U.S. waits to see if the Houthis respond. Tonight, after the Pentagon says a punishing series of U.S. and British strikes destroyed more than 60 Houthi military targets in Yemen, the first sign of retaliation. The Iranian-backed militia saying they won't stop attacking ships, firing an anti-ship ballistic missile into the Red Sea, but hitting nothing. President Biden was pressed, what would he do if Houthi attacks don't stop? We will make sure that we respond to everything that is outrageous behavior, along with our allies. President Biden has been under pressure to act following months of Houthi attacks on commercial ships in the Red Sea through which the U.S. says 15% of global sea trade travels, including oil supplies. And some companies have begun avoiding the Red Sea, a costly disruption. Last night's operation included U.S. and British warplanes dropping bombs and U.S. Navy ships, including a submarine, firing Tomahawk missiles, more than 150 precision-guided bombs and missiles in all. The White House says they demolished Houthi ballistic missile launchers, ammunition warehouses, air defense radars, and more. The targets we chose uh, were all valid and legitimate targets that went right at the Houthis' ability to store, to launch, uh, and to guide. President Biden writing, the strike sent a clear message that the United States and our partners will not tolerate attacks on our personnel or that imperil freedom of navigation. But tonight, Iran, who supplies the Houthis with money, weapons, and intelligence, condemn the strikes, saying they are fueling instability in the region. Meanwhile, President Biden criticizing Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin for keeping his hospitalization secret. Austin. All right. Giving our glory and praise to Yahweh by Shimei Oshai and the Bologna's Tired Teachers and Leadership, the Apostles, Bishops, Elders of Great Millstone, Peace, Mercy, and Grace to the Household of Faith, the Elect, which begins with 144,000, 12,000 men of each tribe. Shalom to you, shalom to the rest of the one third as well, the men, women, and children of the elect fold. Welcome back to another lesson, and in this one, we're going to discuss this conflict amongst the, uh, well, the uh, strikes that the U.S. and U.K. have conducted against the Houthi, um, it says here, the Houthi rebels in Yemen, and um, while, while we keep an eye, or, or why to keep an eye on that region and what's going on over there. So, uh, with that... Let's let's look at who these people are first and foremost. Who are Yemen's Yemen's uh, Houthi? Okay, so you know who are the Houthis of Yemen and why are they under attack? Pretty much, these are are an Islamic group that are backed by Iran and they support um, the Palestinians, the Hamas group in Palestine. So the Houthis say their attacks on shipping routes in the Red Sea are a show of support for the Palestinians and Hamas, the Islamic group that controls Gaza in its war against Israel. The Houthi attacks have disrupted international commerce, forcing international shipping to take the long route around South Africa to avoid being struck. The increase in delivery costs is stoking fears it could trigger a fresh bout of global inflation. Mm. The U.S. said Australia, Bahrain, Canada, and Netherlands supported the operation against the Houthis and sought to present the airstrikes as part of international effort to restore the free flow of trade between Europe and Asia that accounts for 15% uh, 15 15 of the world's shipping trade. So what is the aim of the Houthi attacks? The Houthis are one part of the, what has been called the axis of resistance, an anti-Israel and anti-Western alliance of regional militias. Uh, Hamas has belied Houthis backed by Iran. The Houthi slogan is, you see it here, D-T-A, D-T-I, all right, um, curse the J's and victory to Islam. That's that's the slogan. I don't want to repeat it, but it says their slogan here is uh, D-T-A, D-T-I, and, and curse the, the J's and victory to Islam, okay? So, uh, that's who they are, and... Got this article real quick. Iran backed rebels vow unimaginable revenge on the U.S. and U.K. after strikes on who these kill five militant, five yep yeah, five militants. Um, so five of their people were um, taken down from those strikes. So keeping an eye on this region because uh, the scriptures describe this region as where World War Three is going to be uh, fought at. Um, this whole uh, this whole Jewish Islamic conflict is pretty much 
predicted. You know, they pretty much predicted this whole thing. They they showed that on a yeah, on the cover of the magazine too. Uh, one of the videos I did, they showed on the cover of the magazine. It was pretty much against some Islamic group against some some uh, Jewish people. But anyway, this is Matthew twenty four. And three, it says, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Uh, these videos and everything that we do in this ministry is really us laboring and leading up to, you know, uh, preparing the believers for the, the coming of who the world called Jesus Christ. You know, his the signs of his coming and the end of the world, the end of this age. Right. So a lot of the videos we do, we we're breaking down the signs and discerning them uh, through the scriptures to edify and, and show. All right. This is all leading up to the second coming of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Right. Verse four. Yahweh Shah answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am anointed and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. And what's wars? Wars are conflicts between nations, states, parties, states or parties. All right. So we're seeing these prolonged conflicts um, bubble. You know, it was, you know, um, the, the U.S. and the Ukraine, Israel and Hamas, um, uh, North Korea, South Korea, China and Taiwan, Iran and, and, and whoever else, whatever. Right. So. Verse 7, for a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom is against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So, you know, the beginning of sorrows are, are indicated here with all of these uh, rumors of, of wars, right? these conflicts amongst nations. So I got this map pulled up here, and we're going to get Joel chapter 2 real quick. Again, you know, we're keeping an eye on this region here. Joel chapter 2 and verse 20 it says um, I'll start at 19 yet yeah, the Lord will answer and say unto his people behold I will send you corn and wine and oil and you should be satisfied therewith and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen but I will re remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate all right, America, Babylon, and Great is going to be sent to a land that's barren and desolate, which is the land of Saudi Arabia. Let's um get a map. Let me see. Let me see if I just look on Google Maps. What does it look like? Okay, you see how. Everywhere around this region is all green, but all in, in the middle, like Egypt, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, all of that represents that barren and desolate, that desert-like area. So this region is here is what it's talking about. And um, we're going to prove, you know, why we say that. It says, and I will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he have done great things. All right, these, these people are going to be judged for all the wickedness that they've done. Right. And they're going to be sent here in this region. And. You know, just to prove that. All right, so looking at this map, going back to the scripture real quick, it says, with his face toward the East Sea, which the East Sea is the Euphrates River, which the scriptures tell you to keep an eye on that too. The Euphrates River, which begins in Turkey, uh, runs through Syria, Iraq, and it, it empties out into the Persian Gulf. Also, uh, what they call the Gulf of Oman. It's not labeled here, but it's, it's uh, right right there above Oman. All of that, you know, is uh, begins at the, the Euphrates. So this is that East Sea is talking about. Then here, as it says, with its hinder part toward the utmost sea, the utmost sea is talking about is the Red Sea. So the East is, we just described the East. The uttermost is the Red Sea, all right, which is, you know, again, in these are areas that are important for trade, and these these areas are uh, got boats on them that's being hit, 
And this is all acts of war. So, you know, the most high is going to cause this thing to continue to pick up in this region. You know, got this article pulled up. Why is the Euphrates River drying up and what does it mean? The Bible suggested this means the rapture is coming, but water wars might be a more, eh, you know, we don't get into that whole rapture thing. That's that's not a biblical thing. You know, we break that down all the time, but it says just as the Bible warned the Euphrates River is drying up. Now, and really what the scriptures describe that is, is um, it's going to dry up so that the kings of the east can come in and prepare war. So really it's drying up for the purpose of World War Three to take out. So. I ain't going to really get into that, but because I saw an image of, I think I saw them burning, you know, flags. Right here it is here. Okay. This is them here, you know, burning. You see the two flags. Right, it's burning up, which again remind me of Joel too. It says, "I will remove far from you the northern army and drive them into, because uh, Babylon is going, you know, get sent to this area for the purpose of war, and according to the scriptures, they're going to be drawn out by, you know, their number one ally, which is the the land of uh, the state of Israel. So this is Jeremiah forty eight and, and no forty nine and twenty. And it reads, Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord, Yahweh Shemel was shot, that he have taken against Edom and his purposes that he might propose proposed against the inhabitants of Teman, Taman, Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. Yeah, the uh, Amalekites, which are, again, these are like welfare babies of Babylon the Great. They're going to draw uh, Babylon the Great into the war, man. Okay, and both lands are going to get hit des be made desolate you know by the, the missiles but the scripture says the land that will be brought back by the sword in ezekiel 38 which is uh israel that's the land that's going to get brought back from the sword because that's 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 always been you know the most highest holy land like his like that's that's always been the headquarters his favorite favorite pit as the scriptures say so this is ezekiel 38 and 7 or we can start at 4 because uh we mentioned that the houthis are and uh, backed by Iran. So it says, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. It's talking about Gog, which is pretty much Russia today. And I will uh, bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togomar of the North Quarters and all his bands be many and many people with thee. So these are just different allies that's going to be joined or backed by Russia. Uh, Iran being one of them, being, you know, Persia. Persia changed their name to Iran, I want to say in 1935. In uh, verse 37, it says, Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself and all thy company that are assembled unto thee and be thou a guard unto them. So Russia is a, you know, a guard or a a protection or a watchman, you know, watches over because uh, that word guard, I believe, goes into Shamar. Uh, Russia is going to be like a watch. He, they, they provide them with, you know, different military uh, weaponry. And, then, you know, they're, they're pretty much the strongest ally, you know. And um, outside of the United States, Russia is like number two in the world as far as uh, military strength. Verse 8, it says, After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. All right. And that's us coming back into, you know, we're going to go home. All right. Because America is going to get hit by the missiles, which is the, the sword is speaking about. It says, And is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have always been waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations and they shall dwell safely. Uh, all of them. So, you know, keeping an eye on this region. All right, because, you know, the Most High has a purpose, like it says, against Edom. All right, and these two nations, these are very pivotal uh, uh, places and nations that are going to receive the Lord's judgment in these times. And um, the Lord is going to, you know, use the heathen to rise up against them. This is Joel 3. And nine, pro proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Uh, the Gentiles here are speaking about 
non-Israelites. Prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and pruning hicks into spears, let the weak say I am strong. So that's the Lord, pretty much like a Sol uh, King Solomon said, there's a time of peace and a time of war. The Lord is pretty much taking people, you know, taking these uh these heathen out of the mindset of peace and peace in the Middle East and, you know, treaties and, you know, all of that and, 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 and you know, eating and no, take take the money you have for farming and agriculture and put that into to military. All right, it's time for, for battle. Right. Verse 11, assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about. Thither caused our mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Because the heathen, the scriptures uh, talk about, you know, the most high pretty much judging Israel, you know, quicker uh, because we're we're looked at as his 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 sons, you know, his people, you know, so he always he's he's a lot quicker to act upon us. So he it looks like he's allowed the heathen to have free reign over us and, you know, kind of get away. But the most High is, is, is going to address them real soon. All right. And he's going to address them via World War three. All right, and then ultimately judge their ass too um, by having them in captivity under us. Okay, verse 13, put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down for the press is full. The fats overflow for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multiple, no, well, excuse me. Multitudes, I'm about to say multiples. Um, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The valley of decision, um, Yahweh Shapat, the Lord's judgment, the Lord's decision. Let's look up decision in Hebrew. All right, which is Chara, 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 Okay, sharp point. Chara, Wa. I think that's a Taza. Yeah, that is Taza. Chara, Taza. Sharp pointed, sharp, diligent. Yeah, diligent. Karataza. Yeah, that's it. Diligent. Karataza. Um, strict decision. Decision. Root word. To cut, sharpen, decide, determine, be decisive. All right, Karataza. So, what else? Verse 15. The sun and moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. There's going to be a dark day. You know, in that time, literally, and then it's also going to be a silencing of the the word going out, which is a uh, wisdom and, and understanding, like the scripture says, then then shall wit hide itself or withdraw itself. So, you know, this is why we keeping an eye, you know, on this this region, you know, these this land, all right over here that's that's barren and desolate. Okay, because it's gonna go down over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close there. My prayer was edifying. All right, shalom, Jake.